of Kivumbi 2017. Let me now bring in my guest here in studio. Joining me right now, I'll start from my extreme right, uh, Mwerun Gugi. He is a political commentator. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. We also have Professor Tumbo Oweri, who's also a political commentator. Thank you, Professor, for your time also. I know it's a holiday. Probably should you, you could have been home <laughs> enjoying it. But uh, first things first, did you anticipate or see a curveball like this one being thrown at Kenya on the 11th hour. I'll start with you, Professor. Um, frankly, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought that um, the process had moved to, uh, to a level mm -hmm. whereby it was not possible to, to come back. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is Kenya. Uh, last, in, in August, the opposition was saying we're not going to court. Yeah. Then in the end, in the end. Uh, it, it started a series of events mm. that have um, taken us to where we are now. Yeah. But the bigger thing, uh, Betty, is that this is a very, very difficult time for our country. Mm. Uh, for me, I'm looking at the, the country in the context of its institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, in, to my mind, to me, the political players are the small people in this whole process. Oh, really? It is the institutions mm. that um, uh, are taking a hit. Because if you look very carefully, if you look at the opposition, what is happening on the streets suggests that normalcy is disturbed. No business will be going on. No professional work mm. will be going on. Mm. And generally, there is uh, a poisoned environment. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, 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 the government side, yeah. There has been considerable militarization mm -hmm. of the population. For example, if you look at our institutions, uh, the police appears clearly militarized because you're seeing uh, individual policemen going the extra mile, mile, the extra space to do things that they would normally do, mm -hmm. uh, resulting in outbursts of uh, 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 police brutality. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, you are seeing some citizens mm -hmm. uh, wearing more or less military uniforms mm -hmm. or uniformed service, mm -hmm. uh, sort of, and going out there. Regalia, and, yeah. yeah. And carrying out mm -hmm. um, what are clearly illegal uh, activities. Then you are having politicians seeking um, political mileage mm -hmm. across the board by attempting to mutilate the state institutions mm -hmm. that allow a normal, stable, functioning country right. to move forward. All right. What that means, generally speaking, is that there, there is a general mood to seek short-term mm -hmm. political benefit. Mm -hmm. A short term here, I'm talking about five to ten years. Mm -hmm. Now, five to ten years, there are individuals in the political establishment who must have political power now. There are others who you cannot even negotiate mm. whether they need to have power now mm. or tomorrow. So in all this, the citizen, who is supposed to be the beneficiary, the beneficiary. of the governance systems that right. are in place, yeah. is, is left, actually, you just said people are holding their breath. Mm. No, when, it's, it's <laughs> you true, know, they're true. holding their breath yeah, yeah, they, when they should be working. So at the moment, my feeling as an individual is that I've been badly treated hmm. by the politicians. As a citizen. As a citizen, right. I've been badly treated because hmm. uh, quite clearly, nobody is asking me even to voice an opinion. They are chasing uh, their personal interests, mm -hmm. holding me as a pawn. Uh, as, as hostage. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so Ngugi, your, your assessment about this uh, political undercurrents that we're having right now, e on the 11th hour, eve of election, mm -hmm. just a few hours uh, to October 26th, just like um, my colleague uh, Professor Wari said, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, totally, you know, uh, unexpected. Um, you know, we thought that uh, everybody understood what uh, this uh, game of democracy was all about, that uh, it involves certain clear rules and that uh, everybody would subscribe to those particular mm -hmm. rules, um, uh, the so-called norms, the grad norm of democracy. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the look of things, um, this things have been turned around so that, uh, you know, you can now, you, if you come to Kenya, you would not be able to recognize what democracy really is right. because the, fa the term is so contested that um, even uh, voting itself, 
as a way of getting to power has now become come into contestation. Mm. Um, and that is, uh, you know, very interesting. I think it's happening um, in this country for the very first time. Yes. Let me say that, um, you know, we are, we are here, we are in court. We expect that the court will uh, make its decision, but that that particular decision will be uh, guided more than anything else by the imperative of, uh, you know, uh, the public interest. All right. Because I think uh, in all these, you know, decisions, uh, what we haven't seen as um, a major item being put on the way in balance mm -hmm. is the public interest. And uh, bear in mind that there is the long-term inter public interest and the short-term public interest. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't follow that uh, you always have to think of the long-term. You know, it is uh, le equally legitimate to think of the short-term mm. if the short-term right. can help you secure the kinds of uh, stability and mm. benefits that can help you later on to have a moment to tackle the uh, long-term challenges. All right. So I think that is uh, what you know, every, everybody needs to bear in mind mm -hmm. as we go into, in, into this. Into, because, in, into this. Yeah, We're not even sure if it's an election, <laughs> if it's a situation. 